Are natural fabrics more comfortable than synthetics like polyester? Are they more durable? Today we're going to talk about all that and more, so buckle up, let's get into it. I prefer to wear natural fabrics over synthetics because they're more comfortable. This is something that I often hear, and while it certainly can be true, it isn't always. There is a lot that goes into making a fabric comfortable or uncomfortable, and it's a lot more nuanced than just natural fiber versus synthetic. To recap, natural fibers come from a living origin, like a plant or animal, and they don't undergo any chemical transformation in order to be turned into fibers that can be used for fabric. They may be coated with chemicals, but that's not the same thing as undergoing a chemical transformation. Linen, cotton, silk, and wool are all examples of natural fibers. Watch my Fabrics 101 video if you haven't already for more information on natural fibers versus synthetics and semi-synthetics. An example of a natural fiber that probably would not be more comfortable than a lot of synthetics is this wool tweed that I saw in Paris. You probably wouldn't want to wear that against your bare skin, right? That would be very itchy. However, some wools are very soft and smooth and you could wear them directly against your skin and be just fine. If both of these fabrics are 100% wool, which I'm not sure the first one is, but say they both were, then why are they so different? One of the reasons is the length of the fibers. There are two major types of wools, woolens and worsteds. Woolens are, well, woolly. They are somewhat irregular, they're fairly itchy, and they're known for being very insulating and warm, like this wool Christmas sweater that my mom knit in the 80s. In contrast, worsteds are very soft and smooth, they're a lot finer, there aren't bits that poke out and irritate you, and they're not as insulating as woolens. This is an example of a skirt that I made in fashion school out of worsted wool. It's very smooth. You would never guess that it came from a sheep, right? So in addition to very different spinning processes to make worsted versus woolen yarns, worsteds are always made with longer fibers, whereas woolens are typically made with shorter fibers. Some sheep breeds have naturally longer hair than others, and even within one single sheep, it naturally has some shorter and some longer fibers. In general, and this may be an oversimplification, shorter fibers are going to be less comfortable than longer fibers because shorter fibers have more ends that can poke out and irritate you, and there's also more bumpy transitions between the fibers, whereas with longer fibers, there are less ends and less of those transitions. This is part of the reason why Egyptian cotton, which is often used to make really luxurious bedsheets, is so comfortable. It uses much longer fibers than other types of cotton. This brings me to another point. Filament versus staple fibers. Cotton and wool, which we just talked about, are both staple fibers. While you can have relatively long staple fibers, as is the case with Egyptian cotton or worsted wool, they're still pretty short overall, and you typically measure them in millimeters, maybe centimeters. Filament fibers, on the other hand, are long. They are measured in meters, sometimes hundreds or thousands of meters, and if you're making them in a lab, Theoretically, there's no limit to how long you could make them. Synthetics like polyester or nylon are filaments. The only natural fiber that is a filament, as far as I know anyway, is silk. Silk comes from silkworms. They make a cocoon which they wrap themselves in, and then before they have time to emerge from the cocoon, they get boiled alive to kill them so that they don't make a hole in the cocoon when they try to get out of it and destroy the silk. There is also wild silk, which doesn't harm the silkworms, however it doesn't have all the advantages of conventional silk. I'll link an article about that below. But anyway, after the boiling, the meters and meters and meters of silk that form the cocoon get unraveled and turned into thread. The filament length is part of what makes silk-based fabrics so soft, but as we're going to discuss, length of the fiber is not the only factor that influences whether or not a fabric is going to be soft or comfortable. That brings us to another element of fabric comfort, which is fineness. There are a few ways to measure the fineness of a fiber, but one of them is measuring its diameter, which is measured in microns or micrometers. A micron is one a thousandth of a millimeter. So that is really, 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 really small. In general, the finer the fabric, the more comfortable it's going to be. For reference, a human hair is about 100 microns. Wool fibers, and take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt because I'm not an expert, are apparently between 18 microns for really, really fine, soft, expensive merino wool to like 30 microns for coarser outerwear. For cotton, I've seen a number of websites that cite anywhere between 11 to 22 microns, so cotton is going to be in general finer than wool. Vicuña, which I think is the softest, finest animal-derived fiber in the world, although perhaps that is disputed or untrue, 
is on average seven microns with some fibers being as fine as seven or eight microns. And then there are what I believe are the finest fabrics in the world, microfibers. They're generally made with polyester and nylon. So microfibers are synthetics. They have to be less than 10 microns in order to be considered microfibers. And some I think are as fine as three to five microns, which is wild. Again, Human hair is about 100 microns, so these microfibers are so fine that you can't even see them with the human eye. So obviously microfiber fabrics are going to be really, really soft due to how fine the fibers are. Microfiber garments are generally also known to be breathable, which is what we're going to discuss next. Breathability is an extremely important component of clothing comfort, but what is it? A lot of people think that it has to do with movement of air, and while that is certainly part of it, the definition that I learned in fashion school actually has to do more with moisture. I'll read this definition from Discovery Fabrics, which sums up what I learned. Breathability refers to the process of moisture vapor, sweat, moving through a fabric to the outside. It's a fabric's ability to maintain the balance between the moisture contained in the fabric itself and the air around it. Fabrics that constantly absorb but don't release humidity are non-breathable. Now, breathability is a complicated beast. If you look up what is breathability of fabric or what fabrics are the most breathable, you're gonna get a lot of websites with a lot of contradictory information. And that's just because there are a lot of variables that go into it. Yes, on its own, the raw material used to make polyester is probably not going to let moisture pass through. At least I don't think so, I'm not a chemist. However, polyester can be woven or knit in a way that allows air and moisture to pass through, and it can even be treated with chemicals that make it moisture wicking. So breathability really is not a straightforward topic. However, if you're looking for breathable clothing for yourself to wear during hot weather and you don't need it to have any fancy properties like antimicrobial properties or waterproof stuff, etc., then a loosely woven cotton or linen is pretty much always a good choice. Lastly, we're going to briefly talk about the fabric construction, in particular the way a fabric is woven or knit. Construction has a huge impact on how comfortable a fabric is. Even just between the broad categories of knits versus wovens, and if you don't know what those are, please check out my Fabrics 101 video, I've linked it below. Knit fabrics naturally have stretch, even if there's no spandex or other stretchy fibers in them. So say you have a 100% cotton shirt made out of a woven fabric and a 100% cotton shirt made out of a knit fabric like jersey. Even though they're both 100% cotton, you're most likely going to be more comfortable in the knit t-shirt because you have more room to move and breathe. Now you can have stretchy woven fabrics, but only if you have a stretchy raw material as part of the fiber content, like spandex or elastane, for instance. Jeans are a good example of this. They're typically made of cotton woven in a twill weave, so that naturally doesn't have a lot of stretch to it. However, there's often a bit of spandex added to the fiber content to give it a bit of comfort stretch. The type of knit or weave can also influence comfort. As discussed in the Fabrics 101 video, a satin weave is most likely going to be softer than a plain weave because a few of the threads float over some cross threads before going under one. This gives it a really smooth texture. How densely a fabric is woven or knit also impacts comfort. Fabrics that are woven or knit loosely have more ventilation. There is just naturally more space where air and moisture can pass through. So if you're looking to keep cool, that type of fabric is going to be more comfortable. On the other hand, if you're looking to stay warm, then you'll want something that's knit or woven more densely so that there isn't that space for air to pass through. Even before you get to the weaving or knitting stage, how the fibers are transformed into threads has an impact on comfort. As discussed at the beginning of the video, for woolen garments, which are the ones that tend to be a little bit itchy, not only are they generally made with shorter staple fibers, but they are processed in a completely different way than smoother, longer worsted yarns which means that the woolen threads are gonna be a lot pokier and stiffer, even if you were to make them with longer fibers. So these are just some of the factors that influence comfort of a fabric, but certainly not all. One that I didn't really touch on is treatments. Some threads get treated with various chemicals to give them various properties before they get woven or knit into fabric, and this can affect their comfort as well. Overall, comfort is gonna be a lot more complicated than just natural versus synthetic fibers. Yes, a cotton garment, especially one made of fine cotton, is going to be a good choice for comfortable everyday wear. And would I choose a cotton garment over a polyester one or a cotton and polyester blend over them over pure polyester? Yeah, I probably would. But that doesn't mean that all natural fibers are always going to be more comfortable than all synthetics or that synthetics can never be comfortable. 
There are some very comfortable polyesters and microfibers out there. I'm not saying you should buy them. They contribute to a host of environmental problems, but that doesn't mean they can't be comfortable. And often, actually, a lot of the fabrics we wear every day are blends. They have various amounts of natural, semi-synthetic, and synthetic fibers in them. They can be very comfortable, and they often combine the best properties of a variety of different fabrics. Again, not saying you should buy them, since synthetics do contribute to a lot of environmental problems, and also blends are generally more difficult to recycle, I've heard, than, you know, one type of fiber. I'm going to briefly talk about durability now, but as you probably guessed, after everything I just said about comfort of a fabric, there's a lot of variables that go into determining whether or not a fabric is going to be durable. And again, it's a lot more complex than just natural versus synthetic. Natural fibers, and I believe semi-synthetic fibers as well, which if you didn't watch my Fabric 101 video, they are from a plant-based source, generally speaking, but they undergo a chemical transformation in a lab before turning into textiles are biodegradable. So I suppose you could say that that's a stroke against them in terms of durability because they literally will eventually break down. However, they really need to be in the right conditions in order to break down. If you bury a polyester t-shirt and a cotton t-shirt in your garden, obviously the cotton one is going to break down after a certain amount of time. But most of us aren't burying our clothes in the dirt, and your t-shirt is most likely going to be fine in your closet unless it was really old or already damaged to begin with. In general, though, the biodegradable nature of natural fabrics is not going to make them less durable in day-to-day -day life, as far as I know, unless you're very regularly subjecting them to very harsh conditions. Two factors that are going to have a lot of impact on durability are tensile strength, which is the maximum load that a material can support without fracture when being stretched, and resistance to abrasion, which is the ability of a material to withstand wear and tear from continuous rubbing or friction. Basically, whether a fiber is going to be durable or not depends on a complex interplay between the fiber content and the construction, starting from how the fibers get twisted into yarns all the way to the weaving or knitting process and any treatments or finishes that are applied to the fibers, yarns, or finished fabric at any step of that process. As a very brief example, you have ripstop weaves, which have a very strong thread woven in at regular intervals to prevent rips from happening in the first place and to contain the rips that do occur so that they don't spread and fray and get bigger. And remember our satin weave. It is soft, it is pretty, but it is not that durable because those threads that float over the other threads can sometimes get snagged and come loose. Now, I don't like making broad sweeping generalizations because there are so many factors that affect a fabric's properties, including durability. But let's just say, if you were looking for fabrics for very technical applications, like military or law enforcement, extreme cold, mountain climbing, scuba diving, etc., you're not going to see a whole lot of natural fibers in there, at least not on their own. That's because synthetic fabrics, which are made in a lab, can be engineered to have extraordinary technical properties including incredible tensile strength, like Kevlar, which is a bullet-resistant fabric made by DuPont. So you might be like, okay, then why do synthetic fabrics like polyester have a reputation for being extremely poor quality? Well, first of all, because there's a lot of diversity within synthetics. Military-grade fabrics like Kevlar and Cordura are not the same as polyester. And also, just because a material can be high quality or durable in some instances doesn't mean that it's high quality in every single instance. If textiles can be engineered to be highly durable, they can also be engineered to be a piece of crap. Also, polyester and other synthetics are typically cheaper to produce than natural fibers, so piece of crap clothes that fall apart are more likely going to be made with synthetics because they're cheaper. So essentially, some of the most durable and least durable clothes are made out of synthetics. Although you can have piece of crap clothing that falls apart made out of natural fibers too. It's less common, but there is quite a bit of cheap cotton out there, for instance. To put it simply, what I would consider more important in daily life than whether or not a fabric is made out of natural fibers or synthetics when it comes to durability is the weight of the fabric and the density of the knit or weave. So many fabrics these days are unfortunately very flimsy and lightweight and likely won't have high tensile strength or abrasion resistance, which means they will rip more easily from washing or daily wear. And the density of the knit or weave is important too. Are the fibers close together or are they far apart? Loose weaves or knits can be nice if you're looking for, say, a t-shirt to keep you cool in the summer. However, it's more likely because the threads are far apart that they will get snagged on something and cause it to rip. 
It also bears mentioning that the actual construction of the garment, not of the fabric, but like how the garment was sewed together can also influence its durability, of course. Like if you bought something that was cheaply made, is poor quality, the sewing was probably done fast, it might be uneven, there might be loose threads, and all these things can cause a garment to unravel. Anyway, that is a very brief crash course on the durability and comfort of natural versus synthetic fibers. These videos are hard to make because there's just so many nuances and variables. And I can't possibly talk about all that because A, I don't want to edit a video that long, and B, I'm not a textile chemist or engineer. But I tried my best, so take what I've said with a grain of salt and see you in the next video.